no, I don't normally come here for a reaction segment following our postgame shows with Coach Gary Close, but I'm doing it today because this is one of the most incredible comebacks I've ever witnessed in all of college basketball. That's not hyperbole. Talk about that in a moment. Before we get to our content, though, for today, I want to thank Ascent Nutrition and their awesome coffee. It's mold and mycotoxin free. It's pure. It's organic. It will get you ready for your day, and it will not pollute your body. Check it out, folks. And when you support Ascent Nutrition, you're supporting us here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. And, of course, Iowa floor covering their tough core click together. 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring. Great if you're undergoing a project or thinking about a renovation. Check their stuff out. Visit iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. You'll get this deal. Two sixty nine dollars per foot of this flooring uh, with self-installation. Visit iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. But the Iowa Hawkeyes finding a way. Yes, this is not a typo. 112 to 106, the final score in East Lansing on this Saturday. The Hawkeyes coming off that two-game losing streak, losses on the road to both Northwestern and Wisconsin. This was one they needed. And I made the comment prior to the Northwestern game. I made it in a recent podcast that was released a couple days ago. Iowa needed to win one of their final five games to make the tournament. They have done that now. They are in, all right? They are a lock, in my opinion. Now, maybe the bracketologists out there would disagree. I'm certainly no bracketologist, but I believe that they are solidly in. And the reason why I can say that at this point, they are projected across the board by most of the major bracketologist people. They're projected anywhere from the nine line to the seven or even six line. They are not dropping down below the 11 seed line based on a road loss to Indiana, a loss to Nebraska, Uh, and a potential first-round exit or most likely second-round exit. They want to play the first round in uh, Chicago at the Big Ten Tournament. So I think they're solidly in right now. Now, granted, you don't want to be an 8 or a 9, so either, in my opinion, you either want to be a 10 or 11, likely 11. I think 11 is a better spot than 10. And I'll explain why I I think that in a moment. Uh, Or you want to be a a 7 or uh, even a 6. Eight or nine, obviously, you got to play a one in the second round, potentially. So eight plays nine in the first round, and then the winner of that would play the winner of 116, so likely the one seed. The reason I'd rather be the 11 seed over the 10 seed is, yeah, I'd rather play a three in the second round than a two. And if you're playing in the first round as an 11 seed, yeah, you're playing a six, but I'd rather play a six and a three seed than a seven and a two. That's just how I feel. To me, Iowa's had a greater issue with getting out of the second round. You look back at the history of Iowa basketball under Fran McCaffrey. They've won a lot of those first round games. No, they did not beat Tennessee years ago. No, they did not beat Richmond last year. They beat Davidson one year. They beat Temple another year. I beat Cincinnati another year. They get out of that first round, uh, not with ease, but routinely. They need a way, they need a route to the Sweet 16. So we'll see how that all works out. Obviously, there's a lot of other dominoes to fall, but Iowa, I believe, is a lock with this win. So now that I've had some time to kind of decompress and just digest what happened today, how did this happen? I mean, 112 points in a college basketball game. Well, obviously, that included 45 minutes of play. The Hawkeyes giving up astounding numbers for Michigan State offensively. Michigan State for the game, for the game, uh, made 31 free throws. Now, a lot of those free throws were down the stretch, all right? But Michigan State always does a good job getting into the bonus. They got good free throw shooters. They shot 86% from the line, shot 59% from the field, and 73% from three. 73%. They were 11 of 15 from the three-point line. Uh, that's bad defense by Iowa and really good shot making from the Spartans. The Hawkeyes struggling against the pick and roll all day. I didn't think they closed out very well on three-point shooters whatsoever. That continues to be a problem. In my opinion, one thing that I continue to see, I'm not a coach, but one thing I continue to see as I watch Iowa attempt to defend three-pointers is they seem to really buy into scouting reports. Like You can tell Iowa is well-trained, well-versed into scouting reports, but I think sometimes they uh, trust scouting reports a little bit too much. And what I mean by that is it seems like every game, there's at least one guy for the opponent that's shooting somewhere in the 20s or or low 30s from three. And Iowa just backs off and says, oh, he's not a very good three-point shooter. We're not going to bother closing out strong. You can't do that. Guy gets hot and all of a sudden, situation like Joey Hauser. Now, Joey Hauser shot a good percentage all year, but they allowed him to get hot today, but should have never allowed Joey Hauser to get hot in the first place. And he had a couple early ones that were open, and then he made a couple tough ones. Akins is a tough guy. I mean, that kid, uh, Jaden Akins, I mean, played 
35 minutes was 7 of 10 from the field and perfect from 3. 4 of 4 from 3 for Jaden Akins. Again, the three-point defense, not very good. And Tyson Walker hit a lot of tough shots. He was 11 of 15 overall, 2 of 3 from 3. And, and Hauser, by the way, mentioned him. 4 of 4 from behind the three-point arc. Iowa struggled mightily. They gave a lot of layups, a lot of threes. And as Coach Gary Close has talked about on our show, that's usually an indication that your defense ain't doing a very good job when you're giving up threes and layups. So the Hawkeyes gave up over 100 points in regulation. Now, Iowa found a way to 100 themselves. They were down 13 with about a minute and a half to go. You've probably seen the highlights. If you're on YouTube watching this show, watching this segment, you've probably seen the highlights if you didn't watch the game live. Iowa down 13 with about a minute and a half to go. Made five of six threes down the stretch. Michigan State was pretty darn good from the free throw line in that final minute. Only missed a couple. Uh, and I tell you, A.J. Hogard hit a lot of clutch free throws. And in the end, Hogard was 12 of 14 from the free throw line, but missed a big one that gave Iowa an opportunity to tie it up with a three from Peyton Sanford and tie it up. He did sending this game to overtime. I believe it was Hogard with a last second heave to win in regulation went by the wayside and the two teams went into overtime locked in at one one And once we hit overtime, Iowa wins the tip. Fran McCaffrey talked post game about how he challenged Chris Murray to win a tip. Chris said in the post game press conference that he hadn't won a tip in about a month. I think that's accurate. Uh, and he went up and won the tip. And that kind of set the precedent, set the tone. Boy, Tony Perkins really good as well. I mean, look at his three-point percentage. A guy who we talk about struggling from behind the arc. He was four of five from three. Had a couple big, big tip-ins in overtime. Had five offensive rebounds. Tony Perkins, six foot three, six foot four guard, doing serious work in his 38 minutes played. Connor McCaffrey has been kind of up and down lately. Boy, he hit some big threes to bring Iowa back. Three threes made on the day for Connor. He was three of seven. That's the kind of night he needs to have routinely. Peyton Sanford hit that game, tying three at the end of regulation. He was six of 10. Chris Murray was two of eight. Still hasn't found his stroke from three, but hit a couple big shots, including a, a three off an offensive rebound from Patrick McCaffrey inside of a minute to go in regulation. Aaron Euless was one of one from the three-point arc, uh, and Patrick made a big one too down the stretch, which was good to see because Patrick has struggled shooting since he's returned from his uh, mental pause. So final numbers, Philip Rebracha fouled out in regulation, did not play in overtime, ended up with 18 points, and they needed all those 18 points. Believe me, he was perfect from the free throw line. Six big free throws for Philip, six of nine from the field. Chris Murray had 26 points despite his struggles from outside, eight rebounds for uh, Chris. And I should also mention he had four assists, and Philip Rebracha had five assists. Uh, on the night as well. Aaron Euless had five points, had two assists, just one turnover for Aaron. He has continued to really take care of the basketball, which is good to see. Tony Perkins, I mentioned him, 24 points for TP, nine boards, six assists, three turnovers for uh, the Indianapolis native. Connor McCaffrey had 10 points along with uh, three rebounds for Connor and six assists, one turnover. So this is a turnover ratio. Uh, he is an expert in that category. Connor continuing his uh, exceptional job at taking care of the rock and uh, helping his teammates score. Peyton Sanford had 22 points, five boards. Again, I mentioned his six of 10 from the three point arc. No turnovers for Peyton. One assist. Josh Dix did play some minutes. Still no minutes for DeSante Bowen. We'll see if he gets minutes down the stretch. Again, defensively, uh, I was not going to be able to get away with this when we hit March. Uh, we'll see if they can get away with it on the road at Indiana. I don't expect them to win that game. But Iowa cannot play this bad a defense heading into the tournament. They found a way to win in spite of it. But they were at home, and they needed a monumental comeback in the final minute and a half. So, yes, I'm very positive. Yes, this is exciting. Yes, you should be celebrating and enjoy it because this was a historical, this is an historical win that Iowa uh, grabbed today. But, again, Michigan State shot for the game. They shot 59% from the field, 73% from three. Iowa shot for the game. They shot... 50.7% uh, from the field, 47% uh, from three. 17 made threes in all for the Iowa Hawkeyes. What a number following. I mean, they were 19 of 100 in their past five road games combined. They made 17 threes at home today. Now, keep in mind, Michigan State was just one of five from the field in overtime. So you bump that percentage, that field goal percentage up above 60% if you take away overtime. They were lighting the world on fire and somehow found a way to lose Iowa, found a way to win. A lot of the uh, members of the crowd, a lot of fans went home early. I heard from a lot of fans during our postgame show that said they turned it off, went off and did other things, regretted it later. That's okay. It happens. But uh, what a performance for Iowa. 
And you got to credit Iowa's defense for creating some turnovers. Michigan State turned it over 15 times. So in spite of Iowa's struggles closing out on three-point shooters and defending the pick and roll, Iowa did create some turnovers. Michigan State can be prone to turnovers at times. Fast break points, pretty even, 11-5 to in favor of Iowa. 29 points from the Iowa bench compared to just 19 for Michigan State. 36 paint points for the Hawkeyes to just 24 for Michigan State. And Iowa turned the ball over just nine times. So a good number when you play 45 long minutes at a very high tempo. So you hope this gets people like Peyton Sanford, Connor McCaffrey going. Chris has still got to get that shot back. But uh, I think just winning this game, in spite of how they won, doesn't matter how they won, um, winning this game does huge things for you. Again, I think it locks you into a tournament spot. I think that's almost guaranteed at this point. I'm going to call them a lock at this point. Iowa's a lock for the tournament. You get off the schneid, a two-game losing streak. I don't care if it was at home. Winning a game gives you exceptional confidence as you head back to the road. They still got to figure out how to shoot better uh, away from home, but they got a chance to do that, and they're coming off 17 made threes in this game. The way they came back, they did it against Wisconsin, fell short in overtime in that game, did it against Michigan late. This team is really good at fighting to the finish, and that's a good sign for March, folks. I know people like to give uh, Fran and his teams a hard time for not coming through late in tournament play. They did win the Big Ten tournament last year and made some big shots. And yes, some of that was Jordan Bohannon and Keegan Murray, but they've got some guys who aren't afraid of the moment. Peyton Sanford being one, Tony Perkins being another. And I think their best player, Chris Murray, is still off. So he gets going. This team can beat anybody. I've said it before. I'll say it again. They don't have the best shooters collectively, but boy, this team seems to get hot at the right time. You just hope they can get hot away from home. Last game will be next Saturday, last regular season game in Carver against Nebraska. You win both of these final two games. Again, it depends on what everybody around you, what they're doing. If you can win a couple games in the Big Ten tournament, I could see this team climbing to a sixth seed, and that would be best case scenario. Best case scenario, you get to a sixth seed, play an 11 in the first round, a potential three in the next round. Uh, That is best case scenario for Iowa, and I don't think it's out of reach. I think they can do that, but again, Uh, Need to win these last couple games. A win at Indiana on Tuesday would pay huge, huge dividends. So no, the way they won today, not sustainable, but enjoy it, folks. It was a historical win, a historical comeback, and doing it against one of the all-time great coaches in Tom Izzo um, inside Carver. A lot of people didn't get back into Carver to watch the finish, and that's okay. You live and learn, right? So uh, we'll look forward to Tuesday. I'll be live with you Tuesday following the game with Coach Gary Close for Iowa Post Game with Coach Gary Close right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We'll talk to you then.